Hi, hi. How are you? Thank you so much for doing this. This is yeah, uh, amazing. I was actually I checked and I was uh, already I already joined your channel before. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, you're I know this guy. Right <laughs> it's a very good channel. Thank, Thank you for you. all the useful information. Oh my gosh, no, you're you're too smart for the channel. All the things you were saying, I was trying to understand, but your mathematics mm -hmm. is so much more than I can understand as a layperson. So I just had a couple questions. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad so because I'm trying to let more people know because I think it's very, very interesting. Plus, it's useful. You know, for an investor, uh, you actually can use the information to time uh, getting in and out of Bitcoin, right? I know that many people want just to hold, but uh, as for holders, it tell us, of course, you know, there is no guarantee Right, because it's not like a, you know, uh, planets, right? Where uh, once you discover the law, it should continue to do that for centuries, right? Millennia, millions of years. With financial assets, it's very difficult. But you know, it has done the same thing for fifteen years, right? And uh, and the beauty of a power law. In fact, go ahead. Uh, maybe I'm talking too much. That is the problem. No, it's <laughs> uh, great. But you can ask me questions. Uh, but, you know, one of the most important things to explain is that uh, this is not like another law, right? It's not somebody else just uh, telling us, oh, you know, I found this uh, uh, this fitting or this, uh, even S to F, right? I think people were fascinated by his explanation because it seemed to give some kind of mechanism, you know, some kind of a cause. But if you really think logically about what he was doing, it was not giving a cause because, you know, he's actually trying to say, hey, look, I derived this uh, relationship between price and uh, uh, stock to flow. But how did I derive it? By looking at what uh, Bitcoin did in time. <laughs> so in other words, he, he rediscovered this law. He's re just simply rediscovering this law. And then in addition, he say, well, because, uh, uh, you know, the flow of Bitcoin will go up by a factor of two in every four years. Uh, my equations say it should go up by a factor of the power of three, you know, so two times three is about something like uh, close to 10, right? Uh, it's 3.3. .3, so uh, two to the power of 3.3 .3 is almost 10. So basically saying every four years, the price of Bitcoin will go up by 10. And if he does that, you basically have an exponential. So it's going to go faster and faster, up, up, up. And you can see, right, when you plot that curve on an exponential graph, just the exponential on the y-axis and linear on the uh, x-axis, you get a curve, right? Everybody is familiar with that. Uh, you just look at a typical Bitcoin chart and you can see that it's curving. Well, if it was an exponential, it would be a straight line, right? So. Again, there are two ways of showing the price of Bitcoin, or three ways. You can do it linear. Linear is not very impressive, right? It's kind of flat almost in the beginning, then it jumps, and you don't see much of a pattern. It looks like, yeah, it's going generally up, but uh, is, there is, it doesn't look there is a very precise pattern, right? By the time you do the log, so what, uh, you you, uh, you know a little bit of math? Uh, are you familiar with uh, with concept like log, the log, what the log Vaguely, does? vaguely, yeah. yes. So basically, you know, it, it is the power. So in particular, if you do the, in general, you know, it tell us, uh, um, it is taking the log, right? So if you take the log 10, for example, so it's the base of 10. If you have a 10, it becomes one. If you have 100, it becomes uh, two. If you have 1,000, it becomes three, right? The power, so 10 to the three is 1,000. 10 to the two is 100, 10 to the one is 10, 10 to the zero is one, right? So if you take the log 10 of a thousand, you get three. So the beauty of that is basically showing how Bitcoin is scaling up. So this concept of scale, a scale is these changes in order of magnitude, right? So you go from one to 10 to 100 to a thousand, right? It is important because Bitcoin went from being basically nothing, literally nothing, or a fraction of a dollar, right? And uh, and then it went to a dollar and people got excited and it went to 10 and 100,000, right? So in few years, in 15 years, it went up almost six order, orders of magnitude, right? Or these scale things. That is amazing. Almost 
I think I actually know assets on earth have, has done that in the history of mankind, but I know, right? And so it's important to look at the scale. And so if you look at the scale and you plot of a, uh, the y-axis as a log, then the curve, then uh, the price of Bitcoin looks like a curve, right? So it's a convex curve like this. Uh, I can show you a chart. I don't know if I can share the screen with you. So the blue curve is the price, is the actual price, right? And then you have the dates. So in this graph, uh, we are plotting the price of Bitcoin using what is called a log linear. So it's log in the y-axis and linear in the x-axis, right? So when you do that, you see the price is curved, right? So you're seeing here the blue curve, correct? Mm -hmm. This is familiar to everybody. This, up, this chart is up to a couple of days ago. Um, now, if it was an exponential, it basically it can be shown mathematically that S2F, and I'm talking about S2F because everybody's familiar with that model, right? And everybody got excited about, for some time about the model. And right now people are disappointed because it's not working. In fact, it, it, you know, you can show that uh, if S2F was correct, it will be a straight line in a graph like this, because basically it's predicting that uh, the path of Bitcoin is going to be an exponential. So if you take an exponential in a, in a normal chart that, you know, where you have X linear and Y linear, an exponential will look like, a, uh, you know, almost like a hockey stick. It will go up very, very fast, right? But then if you do log, uh, the log basically uh, kind of counteracts the exponential. So it's going to look like a straight line. But if you can see it by your naked eye, right? It is not an exponential. Right. It would be nice if it was an exponential because we, you know, we will be ultra rich already, right? So Bitcoin is still going up pretty fast, but it's slowing down. It's slowing down, right? So it's it's a pretty amazing growth, but it's slowing down. And so the innovation of what we did, uh, and I did that because. You know, I am a physicist. That is my background. I have a PhD in physics. I was a professor at a certain point. And one of the things we do often, so, you know, when we try to understand data, we always like when data is linear. So you do the x-axis, the y-axis, and then there is a linear relationship. And in nature, there are many of these relationships that are just linear. And then if you plot the data and you don't see a straight line, you try other things, like maybe it's exponential. So you do the log on the y-axis. And as I told you, you will see a straight line if you do that. Now, there is another type of law that is called a power law. A power law has the form y equal another quantity and then a power. The power is the exponent. So for example, let's say, uh, you know, I have a quantity y and then I have a quantity x uh, to the square. Okay, this will be called a power law because there is a quantity that depends on the power, in this case, the power of two of another quantity, okay? So in nature, there are many relationships like this. The one that I gave in uh, the Reddit post is Kepler, the Kepler law, right? So Kepler was this astronomer in, in the Renaissance. He was like, he, he went almost mad because he was trying to find some kind of relationship between the planets, right? How long a planet goes, uh, it takes to go around the sun versus how far it is. And he, he used all kind of crazy mathematics uh, that he had available at the time. He used all these uh, platonic solid. He was, you know, more kind of like a mystics. So he was trying to use some crazy mystical mathematics. And then he, uh, at that time, logs were invented, like, uh, you know, a few years before. Uh, and so they were very popular at that time. And almost by desperation, he decided, I'm going to take the log of a distance of a planet versus the log of how long it takes for, because they knew these kind of things by observation, uh, you know, how long it takes for a planet to go around the sun. And they knew that by the time they knew that the sun was at the center of the solar system and, and not the other way around, right? The, like a, a ge geocentric systems. Uh, and and you can look it up online, right? In fact, maybe you can reference that in your video, but uh, because it's really fascinating. It looks like a damn straight line. <laughs> it's like, whoa, you know, what is going on? And immediately he got, you know, he got shocked because he found the law. He found, 
you know, this it was at, at that time they thought it was God, right? So God did this. It could, it cannot be by chance. Look at this um, incredible straight line, right? And so he was able also to measure the slope. So when you measure the slope of uh, uh, this kind of power law, because it's an easy math, but just trust me. So if you want, I can show you the derivation, but it, it is a known fact. It's easy to demonstrate with some simple algebra that if you have something that looks like y equal x to some power and you do the log of y versus the log of x, it looks like a straight line. And human beings are uh, uh, able to see straight line very easily. Right? I look at this curve and I say, well, what is the equation that drives this curve? I don't know, right? I will have to do some, you know, I will have to use some computer programs to calculate, maybe, you know, some kind of fitting curve or whatever. But a straight line, everybody recognizes a straight line. So when I see a straight line in a log log plot, Physicists get excited. Sometimes, sometimes they make fun of us that we like this power loss a little bit too much, but they are everywhere in nature. And uh, uh, the planet laws, right? These, these laws that are called the Kepler's law. Eventually, Newton took this Kepler law, and then he was able to show that this this motion is due to gravity. This is why they behave in this way. There is a law that governs the motion of this planet, and when when this law applies to the motion of planet, it looks like a, a power law on a log log graph. And, uh, you know, there are many of them. There are, so this is the most exciting part, that this behavior of Bitcoin is not just another curve. It's a power law, and it's a big deal. And uh, I can give you a link of a magnet. It's in the Reddit, but uh, you will see. It's a beautiful video because they go almost for, like, you know, 45 minutes explaining how ubiquitous they are in nature. Like for example, if you look at the metabolism of animals, right? You take a little mouse, then uh, an elephant, a human being, and you ask the question, okay, uh, what is the metabolism rate, right? How many calories this animal uh, is, uh, uh, you know, how many calories this animal needs to uh, eat to survive, right? What is his heartbeat to other things that are related to how fast uh, is uh, uh, the metal metabolism of the animal? Uh, and you plot it, you plot the rate, you know, the log of the rate versus the log of the uh, size of the animal. It looks like, again, a beautiful straight line. Very different animals with mouse, the elephant, etc. But across all these huge sizes, there is some kind of a pattern. And that is fascinating, you know, for a scientist, that is amazing because you're now, okay, what is, what drives this? Why this is happening? You look at, at uh, GDP of nations, uh, the GDP of nation, the log of the GDP of nation versus the population size. Again, a beautiful straight line in a log log plot. There are many, many, many systems like this in nature and also in human, um, in, in, in human phenomena like uh, the cities, the growth of a city, the GDP of a nation, that behave like uh, power laws. Now, there is all kind of theory that financial systems that are in particular like networks, right? For example, Facebook, right? It's both a network, but it's also some kind of financial, you know, it's a company, it has a value, you can trade it on the stock market. And our favorite network that is also related to finance, Bitcoin, right? I Bitcoin, it's even more amazing because, because of the blockchain, we can know everything, right? The many transactions, uh, uh, the volume, uh, uh, like very detailed things about the network. But price is one of the most evident things and, and probably the thing that most people care about. Now, what happens if I plot this chart on a log log chart? Well, it's that what I show on Reddit, right? So let's look at the chart. I have hundreds of charts. You're, you're still seeing these, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what you see. This is what you see. Look at this. Does it look like a straight line to you? Yes. Right? It's straightened, right? Of course, you will say, well, well, but there are also these bumps. Well, okay. So there is a general trend, we can say, right? Like in average, on average, it looks like a straight line. It's not curved anymore, right? We can agree on that. And there are these oscillations around, in fact, I even am drawing here the oscillations. 
the, the first bump is it's not modeled by these oscillations. These oscillations are at four years, like the alvings. And you can see the stars here are the alvings, right? So um, the oscillations are happening every four years. Uh, and I draw just three because the first one, we don't know really what caused it. Some people say it had to do with Mt. Gox and maybe some bots that he was running, you know. So I didn't model it because it's not associated with the alvings. So, but it doesn't matter. Even then, you can see that he was still oscillating around this general trend. And in fact, look at this. The, so I, here I'm drawing deviations, right? So the, the middle line, it's, uh, it's I didn't draw it by hand, right? I use all mathematics. All this is done by mathematics. So there is this uh, uh, tool, this method, it's called, I don't know if you're familiar, it's called regression, right? So you have a bunch of points and then use this mathematical method to say, hey, draw me like a straight line through these points uh, that uh, represents kind of uh, the average behavior of these points. And, the, and so the middle line of this rainbow that you see there, it's actually this straight line. And you can see it goes through the middle of these points. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it does. It's very evident, right? And then what they do, these bands, what these bands represent they are deviations, like percentage deviations from the general trend. So you go and there is like a little uh, legend here on the left that tell you what they are, right? So if you go down 20% from the trend, you get that yellow area. If you go down 40% from that uh, trend, you get uh, the green area. And notice the green area, right? The bear market touch the bottom of that green area very well, right? So in fact, you see the bottom there around November of 2022, right? Mm -hmm. That is when we got the last uh, bottom for the cycle. It was around $16,000. And everybody was going crazy because they thought, oh, we are going down to 10,000, 5,000. I posted on my Facebook, on Twitter. I say, guys, my model tells me that we reached the bottom. And I was right. You know, I, it's amazing, you know, how many people can really actually do this kind of prediction? Well, if you use this system, you so can. It looks, so it looks like the bottoms are much more accurate than the tops. Is that accurate? Correct, correct. Right. So this is one of the limitations of this model, because like every model, I, you know, this uh, saying all models are wrong, but some are useful, right? So the entire idea is that a model by necessity, it's a simplification, right? It doesn't try to explain everything. It's trying to do the best possible job with the minimum possible explanation. All what we do here, in fact, is a really, really conservative model. We are saying, hey, there is a power relationship between price and time. This is all what we do, right? Now, this oscillation of the top, it's, you can add like a, you know, like a little module, say, hey, let me also model the top, you know, the oscillation and you add that piece on top of it. But the basic model, you know, so if you forget the oscillation, is simply that central line, and then some maybe some bands that represents deviations from the trend. So you're perfectly correct. It looks like we we can catch very easily the bottoms, and during the, the bear, right, when the price is in this green area, it follows almost perfectly, right? And, and then, the usefulness also comes for the top because you you maybe don't catch perfectly the tops, but you can say, hey, if we are in that red area and you want to you know get in and out of Bitcoin, it's maybe time to sell. And then wait until the price goes back to the green area and buy again, right? So it would be fantastic if we could get the tops too, but we don't, right? And it's interesting. Why is this happening? We don't know, but you know it seems yes that the tops are going down relatively to the trend, but the red areas are still telling us that we are very close to the tops, right? So it's usual information. Um, so th this is it. I mean, and actually, you know, this uh, this uh, um, graph starts around uh, you know 2010 because this is when the first exchange is open. But I was able to find few. Uh, trades, um, they, are, they were not many, maybe four or five. I was able to find like three. They were like a 
publish or you know like there was uh, some kind of an auction there was the pizza guy you know that bought the pizza in Jacksonville it was another one and if you extrapolate these so this this uh, curve is meant man in such a way that it goes through the Genesis block right so all the time here are, are basically relative to the Genesis block the Genesis block is time zero so what was the value of Bitcoin at time zero zero <laughs> right it was nothing and so but you know these other events that they told you they actually fall I didn't include them but if you go towards the past they actually fall on the straight line <laughs> how confident are you that Bitcoin actually follows a power law 99.99 percent really now is it a guarantee that it will continue yes and I almost you know if I had to take a bet and in fact I'm taking a bet because you know I'm planning to use this as an investment tool I will say you know we have like you know 80 percent 85 percent something of that range. why because as exact, exactly the same thing with the with the, the organism right if you tell me I there is this will I never studied a will but you know, you tell me the size of a whale, and then I'm going to calculate its metabolism. How confident you are that the metabolism will will be this? I can use the power law with all the other animals and calculate what it is based on that power law. And it will be really weird that that animal will not fit, right? So we have evidence that uh, uh, this is following a law. And the other thing is, if this law, the power law, is real, like it's, the data seems to indicate, it means that it's an intrinsic property of a system, first of all. So basically, it's very difficult to change the system by any type of influence from outside. It's doing its own thing. And it can respond locally, like these bubbles, right? The, lob, the bubble are like pushing somebody, right? So there is alving, there is some stress in the system. This is a way that a physicist will, will think. It's almost like, you know, I have a spring. I kick the spring. The spring will be stretching. But then it wants to go back, right? There is some kind of restoring force that brings back the, uh, the spring to its original position. And in fact, maybe it's going to oscillate for some time. But then it goes back to where it was. And this is what exactly is happening here. In fact, you can see, right? Look what happened when there is an alvin. The price goes crazy like up then it goes down and where does it go it goes back to the trend line right to the bottom of the trend line where basically bear market seems to be in fact you can almost say in fact i can show you this other picture that maybe the real trend is this where uh, um, where the bottoms are basically the kind of a basic uh, uh, behavior let me see if i can find that graph so uh, i use what is called the ransack method it allows you because you know i'm trying to do everything mathematically i don't draw things by hand right like other uh other technical analysts right with kind of oh look at, i'm connecting these two dots and uh, you know there is some validity on that but i'm trying to do everything mathematically so there is a method where you can say i'm going to look for outliers and i'm going to select only the points that are not outliers and so the blue line, the blue dots here, are they are they in what are called in liars, right? So they are the non outliers, and the black dots are the outliers. Look at what happens. The out the in liars, right? The blue dots follow really on that straight line, right? Much much better. You can see a straight line even better, right? With some yeah. oscillation because locally, of course, Bitcoin it's an asset. You know, it's going to respond to people trying to buy and selling is going to you know we we use this word stochastic right it's a uh, random basically so randomly it you know it's still random <laughs> it's i've never saw an asset like that that follows even if it is random it still goes back to that straight line right you can see all the bear markets do that right sometimes yeah. more sometimes less right but they do Follow that. And then there are these large deviations. Uh, usually they happen almost uh, immediately after, you know, after a few months after an alving. And then the price goes up 
and then tell me if it is possible by chance to simply go back like here look at you know during uh these are days from the genesis block right day 2000 from the genesis block right we had this was uh during uh, uh this was a uh, 2017 right when we had a bit amazing uh bull run uh the price went back to the trend you know so this is something that is really unique because there is no other asset i look at hundreds of other assets many stocks gold or silver copper i could not find you know the sp500 the entire history of it there is not one single asset that be, be, behaves in this way only bitcoin and you can see right it's it's not something that can be explained by randomness or some coincidence it's has done this over its entire history is doing very consistently i i, I it will be really fascinating. So I will say two things. Very likely, it will continue to do that. And I did a projection, right? So you go back to my first graph, what will happen in uh, 10 years from now, you know, in 2033, if it continues to do that, you almost have a $1 million guaranteed Bitcoin. Based on what this graph is showing us on a log log scale, yes. what will Bitcoin's peak be at the next cycle? So if you if you go back to the chart, right, with the chart that we had before in the beginning, so let's go all the way up. So this chart that is uh, our predictive chart here. Uh, so this is the next peak, right? So here uh, is the next peak. Um, my projection, because I, here I'm trying to use some kind of a decay. So I'm trying to account for uh, the idea that actually uh, every peak is smaller and smaller. So it's some kind of uh, diminishing return uh, process. I know people don't want to hear that because you know we want to spike and make a ton of money, but you know it's still going to be pretty good. It's going to be probably uh, usually what happens is you take the trend and then we have about something like you know if you look at the red area, we are about forty percent from the trend, right? So deviation of 40%. So the, the price there is about 125,000, uh, just of a general trend. So I will say close to 200, close to 200. It and could be more because, you know, we are saying that it's going down on, you know, while uh, the entire projection here is based on thousands of points, you know, saying that uh, the peaks are going down is based only on three points. So it could be that, you know, it's by chance that it's going down and instead the next one is going up, right? Even more than everything else. So because it's only three points, uh, it seems there is a trend, but you cannot really make a, a statistical argument just based on three points. So hopefully it goes up. But if it, let's take the worst case scenario that it continues to do this and there is a trend actually, a real mathematical trend uh and in fact there is actually i plotted this and it looks like an exponential decay the peaks are in a, on, on an exponential decay so you can calculate what will be the next peak based on that and so we are talking about 180 119 you know there is some room for going a little bit up a little bit lower but at least at least 150,000. So I'm pretty sure that it will be for sure we are going higher than 60, right? To higher the all time high. And it should double at least that, I think. And that's in what year? So this this should be around, if you look at here, so we're talking 2000, uh, middle of 2025. Got it. And what happens in 10 years? So by so everybody wants to know when it is a million, right? So let me tell you that it will be one million in 2033. So July of 2033, that should be the nominal value, right? Uh, so we are going to be close because you know the nominal value is really what matters because you can go below or above. So about one million in ten years from now, and and again. I I rather have something that is steady and consistent and unstoppable 
and I know how to calculate, you know, what it's going to do. Look at this chart, right? Does it seem, to me, seems pretty impressive, right? Here, I made so, in such a way that during the bear market, so I, I model, this, this are graph here as a three components, as the power law, as the periodic peaks, right? And uh, I told the model that we want to approximate to this green bar during the bear market, because it seems that, uh, it, it, you know, Bitcoin does that. It, it tends to stay within these green bands during the bear market. And it, it's almost a perfect fit. I never saw anybody fitting on a financial asset so precisely, you know? And it's not just a, a fitting of the past, it's a projection in the future because, again, I would like you to emphasize when you explain this to, the, to your uh, viewers, we are dealing, if this hypothesis that we are dealing with a power law is true, is not another formula. It's something very intrinsic to the system that it's almost like a fingerprint for the system. And the system will continue to do that in the future. In fact, as it grows, it should be even more stable. It should do more, you know, it's more difficult to change it. It's such a big network that it, it cannot be gamed, you know? I know it sounds crazy because People want to think they are a free agent and all. I can, you know, a new company come in. What, what happens with the ETF? It's the other way around. The ETFs came in because Bitcoin is doing this thing. <laughs> you know, it will attract more and more resources. It, it's also a story, right? In the beginning, Bitcoin was worth nothing, but it was a good idea, right? So people started to get excited. Like very few people, the people that knew about it, they got excited, they put time in it, they put resources, computer uh, time, electricity, you know, time to look at the code, to fix bugs, and that attracted more resources. Then people started to trade it and, you know, for pizzas, okay, that brings more resources. And people uh, heard about it and came in. And basically this, it's kind of a feedback loop, right? So uh, Bitcoin does something, people come in, that makes the price goes up, Bitcoin responds, you know, and so on and so on and so on. That is exactly the type of mechanism when you have a feedback loop like that, that creates power loss. So it's all consistent. It's a story, you know. That's power awesome. loss show up when you have networks and when you are, in fact, even biology, you know, there is some, If when, please look at the video that I'm going to uh, send you, okay? It's a very beautiful video. You will understand a lot of things about science and so on. They emphasize that there's a video, you know, for for the public. So it's they, maybe you can also link it. Uh, it. It says they are everywhere in nature. These are power laws, and why they are so important? Because you know they talk about how things interact with each other. Probably even in biology, you know, the body is a network too. You know, the cells communicate with each other. There is information moving here and there, and so this is why we see in biology these uh, power laws because they are manifestations of things that interact together and there are feedback loops, you know? So it's a way of understanding the world in a sense. And it's beautiful because our favorite asset that, you know, we are all in love with Bitcoin is behaving in this way. And it's something that is not well known. And I think it should will be well known, more well known. And it's not just something cool, but you can use it because, you know, I want to do myself, right? I, I have this chart for years, but I didn't trust it enough to use it. And now I want to use it because I want to, you know, be, get out of Bitcoin, even if, you know, some oddlers don't like that. But why not? If you can multiply your Bitcoin, then it depends on your taste for investment. You can short if you're a little bit more brave. Or at least you can buy back when it's time for the bear market. And this chart tells you exactly when that is going to happen, like it did it before. We got uh, the previous bottom, the previous bottom, the previous bottom, and it's going to do it again. You know, we have a magnificent, magnificent tool to tell us when the next bottom is going to be. If you don't want to sell all of them, maybe sell half, you know, be conservative, sell half, buy half the next bottom and do that because it's, this is going to multiply you by a factor of 10, maybe, you know, because if you... If you were buying Bitcoin where the bottom was here, selling it there, buying it back, you could multiply your Bitcoin by a factor of 10 or more, you know? 
So it's a very powerful tool if you want to use these cycles and these are part of what Bitcoin does. So why not? You know? What would you say to lay people that look at this graph and since it's not a perfectly straight line, they'll tell you, well, couldn't you draw a straight line through any squiggly graph? Technically, as long as the line is thick enough, it would capture the band. Okay. So if you go back to the straight line itself, right? There is a tool that tells you how good that fit is. Okay. Mm. That tool is called regression. Uh, and uh, here you have a number, right? R square equals 0 0.95. That means, okay, in layman terms, that 95% of Bitcoin behavior is captured by this simple straight line. Yes, you can do a regression through anything. You know, I can put just uh, random dots on the chart and you can still draw a line there. But your R square will be horrible, will be, you know, close to zero. Okay. I I went from astrophysics to neuroscience, right? And I, it's fascinating because I'm learning things about the brain, but a lot of medical data, when you look at the medical data, they never get 95%, never. Okay. And they are published like, oh, look, and people invest billions, like in a new drug, etc. Oh, we got, you know... 82, you know, 0 0.92, right? 82%, 70%. It's all, sometimes they are barely there, you know, in this data that looks like a physicist will never publish a paper like that. You know, we will be like, ah, this is garbage, you know. Uh, we are very arrogant because, you know, we have a, we can do the same experiments with, a, you know, if you have a machine and collects data, you can do it millions and millions of time until you are sure about your statistics. With a, with a medicine, you cannot, right? Because you do these studies, uh, people are very variable, etc. So, you know, maybe seven, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, you know, of R square. Never 0 0.95. Here we have a 0 0.95. So yeah. the model is fantastic. It's Yes, there are these huge, big things, but it's part of what is happening. In general, you will not be able to do that. I challenge people, if you have a, you know, a tool... In fact, I can give you a link. They, uh, this, uh, this uh, website, you can put some data there. They, it's almost like an exercise for students. And he's going to do the log log for ch uh, chart for you. You put a, an Excel file, and then he's going to do a log log, log chart for you. And you can try. Try with SP500. Do you have any examples of any other asset that you've tried to plot? I, 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 I can send it to you. I, we can do gold. You can do silver. We can do a bunch of them. I can send it to you. I would, oh, I would, I would love to see that just yeah. as a comparison so people understand that yeah. it's not as easy as it looks. First of all, let me say one more thing, right? Uh, I don't know if you saw there is some guy that wrote a paper or a Medium article saying, that he debunked this, right? Yes. First yes. of all, it's complete garbage. I'm telling you, it's complete garbage. The guy, it, yeah. guy doesn't even understand what is happening here, right? So first of all, you say something because you see how all the dates bunch up, mm -hmm. right? And he say, oh, that means that uh, we are saying that time accelerates. <laughs> no, we are simply saying that uh, if we plot it in this way, it looks like that to make changes in price, they go up by a factor of 10, we need more and more time. That is exactly right. So if you go, you know, Bitcoin took, uh, let's say Bitcoin took uh, uh, one year to go from one to 10, okay? To go from one, from to, from to go from 10 to 100 is going to take 10 years, right? So this is what uh, this chart says, okay? I'm, I'm not necessarily that up in, like in that way, but I'm saying, right? That every time is going up by 10, is going to take an equivalent scale. So you're not going to have any more, here we are doing days, so days, right? So we are not going to need any more 10 days. We are going to need 100 days. We are not going to need any more 100 days. We are going to need a thousand days, right? So years to go up of another factor of 10. But it kind of makes sense, right? Because Bitcoin went up very fast in the beginning, right? It, it, you can see it took very, very little time to go from nothing, you know, like a, a cent to one dollar to ten dollars, right, within a few years. But it took more than 10 years to go to thousands of dollars. Yes. Right. So this is what this chart shows. And the guy, for some reason, was thinking that we were accelerating time. No, you know, he's saying something 
but uh, it's obvious that he never played with this uh, type of chart. In Giovanni, physics, we do this all the time. Can you help me explain what is the exponent? Because I think you said it was 5.8, but yeah, 5 .8. My, in my limited understanding, most power laws, they follow between one and three, right? But what does that all mean? Like one to three and 5.8? What's what Okay, is so first of all, mathematically, this means it's kind of a, the, um, um, you know, the, the number that relates the scaling up of a price and the scaling up of the time. So in this case, it's 5.82. So first of all, it's basically the slope, right? It's the slope of these straight line, right? So it's the power, but when you draw it as the log of the price versus the log of the time, it turns out you, it's easy with some little algebra because you're going to have, you know, if you, you can even see, right? If I have something that is y equal x square and they take the log, right, of this left quantity versus the log of the right quantity, the exponent goes down and it becomes kind of a, like a slope of a straight line. So it's going to look like the log is your y and the log of, of time is your x. And then the exponent, right, using log rows goes down, right? And it becomes like, like this slope, right? So usually straight lines are something like y equal m, where m is the slope, times x plus some constant, right? Do you follow me? Right. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the exponent becomes the slope of the straight line, in other words. Got it. So now, over time, in physics, does that in increase? Physics, uh, huh. that, that quantity stay constant, right? Now, when you do the fitting, sometime if you do the fitting just after uh, uh, a bull market, it will be a little bit more tilted towards this outlier. So it will change slightly. So for example, I did a Reddit, right? The one that uh, Burger used it five years ago and the exponent was 5.9, right? Uh, but one thing you can do is to do it every day uh, for like say seven years ago and then take an average of this because you know it's going to change a little bit and they are oscillating that is a beautiful, beautiful thing because it's showing that the model is stable. They are oscillating around the value that is about 5.9. 5, 5 so you can take an average and say, hey, look, the, the, the slope is changing a little bit because it depends where I'm doing the fitting, if I'm doing it close to the peak or closing to the uh, bottoms here, but in average stays very stable. That is another thing. I, I, I did some tests to show this thing is stable since like 10 years ago, you know? Uh, now, did you hear about Trollolo model? I've heard it of it. Like, yeah, it's one of the first model. He he, pub, he published on Big Talk, Bitcoin Talk in 2014. I didn't realize because his math was a little bit strange. He used two different logs, one for log 10 on the y axis and log uh, natural log on the x, x axis. He didn't plot uh, this type of chart, it was log linear. But he did this fitting use, uh, using uh, some mathematical tool, and it turned out the fitting say, "Hey, we are dealing with a log uh, on 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 and this this thing is a log." And I didn't realize that exactly meant that he was dealing with a power law. So Trollolo model is actually the grandfather of this model, and he was the guy was I don't know how he did it. I think he didn't know about power laws and the significance of it. So that is my contribution. I'm trying to tell everybody that is something fundamental about Bitcoin. It's as important. I don't. I don't want to take the credit. Is all Satoshi? He created this thing, but Satoshi did something where this creature, this beast, is behaving like a mountain. Is becoming. Is be behaving like a river. Is behaving like a city. Is behaving. It's something universal. This is why I'm so excited as a physicist. When I draw this the first time. I almost fell from the chair, not literally, because I do this all the time, you know, as a profession. And the, and yes, we are ubiquitous in, in nature, but you can publish a paper. If you find a, 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 a power law that was never discovered before, just the fitting, just the fitting. Oh, look at this. I'm publishing a paper. Now, you have no clue of why is a power law, what is the mechanism behind, and people will make fun of you because they say, hey, what is the cause? I don't know. Let's find out, right? But like Kepler, when he found that the planets were behaving in that way, 
he didn't need to know what was behind. He didn't know about gravity, what came later, but you know, he helped Newton to find it. It was very important to publish that uh, result because it's something that cannot happen by chance. It's not easy to get this. In particular, over such incredible, the other thing is this thing, you know, five order, six order of magnitude, because we went from 10 minus one to 10 to the five. So we are talking about six order of magnitudes. It's incredible. It's not something that happens by chance. Now, you know, I challenge any other scientist coming here and telling me this is due to chance. I'm, uh, it's nothing. It's stupid. I want to see them trying to argue that, right? It, it's almost impossible. What percentage of your personal portfolio is Bitcoin? A lot. A lot. I, I was asked one time, actually, on uh, uh, MintPal. They took me they took away 35 Bitcoin from me. 30. Uh, you know, I, I have, I, I can write a book about my adventure in Bitcoin. I downloaded <laughs> the wallet in 2010 because wow. I knew it was, it was going to be something amazing. I downloaded the wallet when, because I am not a computer scientist and at that time, the instruction were terrible. You know, like you had to be a computer science guy to understand what to do. I say, well, I will come back to it. <laughs> and then I didn't. Uh, and it's still sitting there. I still have a computer. Just I kept it on purpose to tell me how stupid I was, you know. And uh, you know, but I jumped in in 2013. I bought my first Bitcoin in 2013, and uh, they hacked me. You know, I didn't have everything in in that exchange, fortunately. So something survived. And and you know, I I believe in Bitcoin. You know, I. I invested in Bitcoin. I want to continue. You know, I, I created uh, all this tool. I spend a lot of my time trying to understand Bitcoin. Yeah. When do you think you'll sell it, if ever? You know, there'll be a point where, uh, of course, I want to uh, enjoy life. You know, I want to retire. You know, I want to, well, no, maybe retire, no, but, you know, uh, because I, I, I want to continue to explore and understand things. Uh, I am interested in longevity. You know, I want to live forever if I can. <laughs> Um, or at least, you know, put the money somewhere in a trust, you know, the Bitcoin in a trust. So a little bit, a little bit. Is there anything that would happen or that could happen to Bitcoin, either on this chart or just macroeconomically speaking, that would scare you or dissuade you from your belief? No. And at the same time, I, I, you know, we have to say that, you know, if these were planets, if we were describing some physical system, we we will have enough information to say, hey, I think we will continue to do this, you know, for for the future, right? Because usually physical system, unless, you know, they, there is a star that is exploding or, you know, something catastrophic, they will continue to do the same thing. Now, financial systems, you know, if there is, if there is a WW3, you know, there will be no internet where the people go back to the Stone Age, right? So there will be no Bitcoin, there will be nothing. But it needs to be something of that level, you know, something that is as catastrophic as you can imagine to change the behavior. And uh, I will say to this other thing, if, a be, you know, beside, so if this model says to think, one, that at least over the last 15 years, Bitcoin behavior was very predictable. We still need to understand it would be really great to have a Newton, right? A Newton comes by, takes this information and find some codes, right? And be, and actually, by the way, like I say from the beginning, S2F was not a description because it, it kind of rediscovered this, you know, because uh, it's kind of a tautology, right? It didn't have really something external like Newton, A, there is F equal MA that can explain. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, the data from the planets, is something that he understood, right? And then he applied to the motion of the planets. We need something like that, right? To understand what Bitcoin is doing. So it would be great. But at the same time, you know, this is undeniable. It's there. 15 years of behavior like this. Now, will it continue to do? It will be amazing, right? In five years from now, we have this talk again and say, hey, look at this. You know, it did that. Like, what is going on? It will be crazy, right? Because who is predicting the behavior of an asset five years ahead, right? I did five years ago when I published it ready. It's the same model, exactly the same, right? Would be crazy if he continues to do that in five years, right? 10 years. Now, what if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, that is also interesting. What happened, right? 
this model will tell us also that something fundamental happened to Bitcoin to make it change. Now, there are many systems like that sometimes uh, that it's called a, a phase change. This is how we call it in physics. Like when you go, for example, water goes to ice or water goes to gas. If you try to describe the behavior of, 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 of vapor or ice using what you learn from water, it will not work. Right? It's the same stuff, but it behaves in a completely different way. It, it has a, a sudden transition, a what we call a phase change, to some other type of system. And so you will need to use some other laws. So you will see a change. Maybe it continues to behave like a, a power law, but the slope here, maybe will go steeper. Maybe it will go less steep. It will change. That will be a phase change. And we will see from the chart. And that will be very interesting because it will mean something happened external and internal, right? This feedback loop that uh, changed the nature of, of Bitcoin. So that also will be very interesting. Right? Yeah. It will be more difficult to make prediction because now you will have to see more data in this new phase. And then maybe you can extrapolate to that, but it will also give us useful information. So it's a very valid chart anyway. But if it continues to happen, mm -hmm. is there a theoretical limit of how high Bitcoin could go? No, uh, the, the, that is where the law kind of break, you know, kind of breaks down because it's uncharted territory, right? Where can this go, right? Uh, in theory, it could climb even more, maybe reach 10 million, mostly because we are trying to represent the value relatively to the dollar and the dollar is inflationary. So like, you know, the meme says it's going to zero. <laughs> so if something goes to zero and you're trying to calculate the value relatively to that something that goes to zero, this thing goes in to infinity, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe this is, you know, if inflation, this is, this is not just inflation because you know, it will take years and years to, uh, just to do due to the, uh, inflation to see this growth, but inflation is part of the equation here somehow, right? It's a component. Maybe can even be adjusted. So I never done that. I should do this graph and adjust for inflation and see how it looks like. But you know, it's infl It's also good because it tells us, right? Given the current inflation, this is how Bitcoin beats the inflation, right? And in fact, it goes up and it goes much faster than inflation, right? Uh, because even by, when it slows down, it's still making about 40, 50% a year. That is amazing, right? In comparison with almost any other asset, in particular, because you know, it's not just, oh, you know, this year was great. We did 40%. That is a bad day for, that is a bad year for Bitcoin, right? Right. Uh, so eventually, you know, we'll taper off. You can see it's tapering off, right? And it will take, this is what happens is to go to the next level of 10, is going to take even more years, right? It's more to take more years. And so and my, many people get disappointed by that because they think, okay, I would like to be here, you know, in the in 2010 when Bitcoin was going up by a factor of tens within months. So that is a sad part of the story. But the good part of the story is that you have something very stable. It's never going to go down to zero. All the idiots that say it goes to down to zero. I'm sorry to insult them, but they are idiots. And actually, as time passes by, it became stronger, more stable, more robust. You know, I'd rather have such a system, in particular, if it's going to be kind of like digital gold, you know, it's going to be the strongest assets is still going up. It's going up more than, you know, in, in anything else, almost, at least in the long term. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's one of the best investments that you can ever do, you know. Smart people like Saylor know that. He, I know, I don't know if he knows about this. He should know. Mike Saylor should know about this because, you know, you can even do like a table. Say, okay, this is a, a you know, the interest I have to pay on a loan. So is it a good idea for me as a company, as a some kind of investment fund or whatever, to make a loan in comparison with this chart, because I can predict it. You know, I can predict what Bitcoin will be in five years from now, 10 years from now. So I know, you know, how long it will take me to repay the loan, you know, and everything is possible. And this is my first time because nothing has ever behaved in this way, in this predictable way in terms of assets, you know, no yeah. gold, no silver, you know, they're still uncertain, but this is not uncertain. I, I know it's difficult for people to, 
think about that, you know, because what, what does it mean that you have an asset that simply goes up and up and up and up, at least for the foreseeable future, you know? Do you have any advice or suggestions for how the average person should play it? Should they have it like 10% of their portfolio or are you like all in? Why 10%? I, I don't understand it, you know, like exactly like sailors, so like, like he tells you, right? He tells you, he's, he's a smart guy, right? Have you, have you ever seen some of his old videos when he was telling everybody to buy Apple and, you know, <laughs> he, he, he's not a billionaire by chance, right? Right. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I love his explanation of Bitcoin as it refers to the transfer of energy and the efficiency. Yeah, he, was... he does it in a very physical way. Yes. He's not a physicist, but he talks right. exactly like a physicist would talk about. It's energy. Yes, it's energy. Uh, intelligence. It's information. You know, and the... and this law here is telling us there is something extraordinary about Bitcoin because even if there are these local fluctuations, it has this. It's programmed. It's programmed to go up in a way, very and people can try. You know, all these. Uh, uh, ETFs are coming in, all these big investors, they can play the whale, but the Bitcoin doesn't care about whales. It continues do, to do its own thing. Do you really think there's some Newtonian mechanic or equation like 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 gravity or some principle that could account? It's explain? going to be complicated, right? Because it's a network, it's not uh, like planetary um, laws, right? Where uh, even gravity is complicated if you go really deep into it. But uh, you know, it's relatively simple in comparison with a, a biological system. This is why we know we have a law for planets, but we don't have a law for a human being, right? right. But we know, we think there is some order, of course, there are still laws of physics. And, we, you know, that is the incredible thing that even all these complicated things that are happening inside us, we are still expressed as a simple power law. Because, you know, you take brain size uh, and versus the size of an animal, power law, you look at energy production, you know, uh, for example, you know, that is also, there is a famous uh, Steve Job interview where he talks about the bicycle, right? He say, oh, there is this graph where you see the power produced by different animals, right? And you can see the power of different animals uh, versus their size, etc. It's a power law. He's referring to that. And then he say, and then you have a human being on a bike, he's out of a straight line. You see, that tells you something because we invented this thing that goes against the general trend and we jump out of the trend, right? Because we have a bike. Okay, so that tells us, you know, we take out different machines and how much energy we produce. I bet there is some kind of a power law there. Like, in fact, more slow, right? So also that, right? It's a particular law that uh, go, you know, tell us it's not random, right? It tell us that uh, uh, given a certain amount of time, this is how much... Uh, computational power we can have, right? So it's, there are these general laws and, you know, it's so interesting that Bitcoin, even if there are, it's a very complex system. And so this is why, you know, S2F was a good try and I admire plan B to have tried to give an explanation, but it's not going to be one single thing. It's going to be many things, right? It's going to be a lot of mechanisms that come together they all play, there are all kinds of different feedback loops and they create this thing. That is what matters, you know? This is why ma many people criticizing this, say, but you don't have a mechanism. I don't care about it. I mean, I care, but I don't need it. You know, if I know that uh, this is its behavior in time, that is actually measurable. It's the most easy thing to measure. And then I know what to expect. What else do you need, you know, to, to make prediction? Time is... The master here. It's almost like quant traders. They don't really care the reasons. They just follow. The data. Exactly. If I have, a, you know, in fact, actually with quant, I do quant trading all the time. You know, one of the things that happen, even if you have a correlation, do you remember with R square? If you mm -hmm. have a correlation of 0 0.2, the people will laugh, right? Say, that is not a correlation, that is random. Even that little advantage, if you find anything like something in the past that predicts the future by 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you can make a ton of money because all what you need is a slight edge, right? You need like 51%, you need 52%. So you can predict something 53, 54, 60%, you are beating the house, right? You are, you are the house, you know? You're, you're, you have an advantage in, and you can make a ton of money. Look at this chart. 
I wish I could do that with anything, right? You know, this is the, the only limitation of this chart is that you cannot trade on a daily basis with this chart, right? It doesn't allow you to say, okay, what is going to be, be per price tomorrow? But it's going to tell you what is the price from five years from now. So if you are a long-term investor, this is what you need. And it's amazing because look at it's, now, you know, let's come back in one year from now and let's check, right, where we are on this chart. We can keep this as that... a reference and then we can see where the dots are if they fall on that path, you know. Do you think that people that are buying the ETF of Bitcoin are, is that okay for the average person or do you think that's dumb? I, I love it. Then I tell you why, right? I understand the maximalist and they say, oh, you know, uh, you don't have the keys, etc. I have so many friends today, you know, I, I was there, I, I play Warhammer. I don't know if you, I like that game, you know, I, I meet with people of my age, you know, we, my girlfriend makes fun of me, you know, that I play with little soldiers. But, you know, these are guys, this is our hobby, we play, and I try to come tell them about Bitcoin. You know, this is, I'm talking with an engineer, a clever guy, he doesn't get it, and he doesn't want to get it, you know? And there are many people like that. I don't understand why. It makes me sad, but what can I do? He's my friend, you know, and I, I don't want to tell him too much, you know, if he doesn't want to hear, you know, because otherwise you know, I think I'm trying to sell him something. I don't I don't want to sell anything. I want him to take care of his financial future for because he's a friend. So the ETF is a way for these people because, you know, probably they, are, they have a pension fund and their financial advisor that is a little bit more knowledgeable about assets he knows, he deeply knows, right? More and more people are starting to understand that Bitcoin is the way to go, you know, because even these people from BlackRock get it. So, you know, everybody will get, you know, that is a financial advisor, starts to get it. We are not the, smart, the smartest people, you know. Do you uh, think people like Jamie Dimon and the bankers, do you think they secretly own Bitcoin? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, and so, you know, if, they, if more people can get into Bitcoin indirectly through ETFs because their financial advisor has this uh, pension fund and they say, let's put 5%, 10% into Bitcoin and their assets go up. And, you know, I think all these people that lost tons of money in 2008, I lost a job in 2008, you know, because uh, I was teaching, etc. cetera. You know, it, it was a financial crisis. So, um, you know, all these people, I, re I remember, you know, some of my friends saying, you know, they're uh, uh, pension plan went down by big percent, you know, it would not have happened if you had a, a substantial investment in Bitcoin. In fact, you know, Bitcoin was invented in 2009, just after the financial crisis. This is what Satoshi wanted to do. So, you know, uh, I, I, I think it's a great thing. And it's also, in a sense, you know, it's predicted by this graph because this graph to go continue to up, go up it needs a mechanism like this. It needs people to come in and contribute and do things to make Bitcoin grow. And so the ETF, in a sense, it's a prediction, right? Uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's the other way around. It's not that the ETF that are causing something happen to Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin that is attracting. You know, or maybe it's a feedback loop. It's probably more cautious to say, you know, Bitcoin does something, attracts uh, resources, the resources make it go up, it makes uh, all the resources coming in, and so on and so on. You know, so this, this is what is happening. So you can actually use this chart and say, hey, when is going to happen that Bitcoin will be more valuable than all the gold on earth? We can calculate it. I will do it, and maybe you can uh, make an update based on that right later on. Uh, we can calculate that, uh, and we can say other things. When, uh, when all the money in the world... Uh, will be, um, you know, Bitcoin will be more valuable than all the cash in the world and all, all kinds of stuff like that. This graph will tell us, right? And something will happen during the time, you know, like people, you know, maybe like nations, like large nations will start to make uh, Bitcoin, not just small little nations, but large nations will start to use Bitcoin as a, a monetary reserve, you know? And uh, we can predict when that roughly will happen, you know, because of this chart. So this chart is really invaluable, you know? I so, think I think about Bitcoin being a million dollars or $10 million, it almost scares me because I feel like in order for it to become that valuable, something has to be horribly wrong with fiat and the traditional system. But it is, and right? I think about all the debt 
you know, it's already there, trillions and trillions, you know, and this chart is telling us it's basically unavoidable, you know, it's going to happen, look at it, you know, 2000, 33, this one, it will be 1 million. It doesn't have to be anything horrible. It simply continues to do what has done before, right? That's true. There'll be events, there'll be events, but uh, it's simply like a, a relatively continuous path. Like, you know, Satoshi kind of foresee this, like say, okay, if uh, this is happening with the bank in 2008, there is this financial crisis, bailout, uh, the debt continues. I need to have something that gets out of this system. Well what happens to people like Michael Saylor who become like quadrillionaires or whatever it is? What would they just Well, be... first of all, relatively to something that is inflationary. So, you know, that, that, you know, it's, that is part of the story, but I don't know. Right. So it will be these very, very wealthy people and really? uh, many other people like us that are going to be millionaires. Right. And, uh, and we deserve it because we believed in this thing, you know, when, when not many people believed in it, you know? Right. And uh, um, yeah, so it's, let's see, it's it's something that has world consequences, right? So Bitcoin was a meme uh, and, and it's still a meme, but people are taking it more and more seriously, you know? Yeah, So that's fascinating. I, I think it is every Bitcoiner should be aware of this chart and they should understand why it's important. You know, it's not some other formula. It's not, you know, some, okay, this is this equation. It's a power law. You know, it's power not law a guy be... drawing a, a thing by hand, right? No, no. It's, uh, you know, here it looks like a curve. First of all, you can see there is some regularity in this curve. But then it's really striking when you do that log log chart. I did it with uh, uh, a, a thousand stocks and None of them look like a straight line in a log log plot. Absolutely not. 